rock on. Yes. And Alex right. is tearing it up. We are. <laughs> and you know, we're going to add a little throttle, and we're going to add a little throttle, and we're going to add a little throttle. Perfect, perfect, perfect. A little more. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. He's tearing it up that hill. Get it up over there. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Keep coming, keep coming up the hill, up the hill, up the hill, up the hill. Easy, 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 stop. As you can see, the Ineos Grenadier has landed on American soil and I've been given early access to one of the first driving prototypes. Is it any good? Well, it's 90% there and this prototype appears to be closing in on what the production vehicle will look like. So ladies and gentlemen, I have been signed up for this opportunity. I have my little pass and it's not only one Ineos, but it's also another one right here. Just in the, ooh, I like this color too, it's all blue. I'm a fan of this blue. <laughs> this is an opportunity to be off-roading this vehicle here in upstate New York. This has been a long time coming because the first time I saw this vehicle was in New Jersey. But this is now a vehicle that I have been very much looking forward to seeing because I'm a big fan of Land Rover and the Defender and old school Range Rovers having been a previous owner of one. And I wanted something that was gonna be a little bit updated, a little bit old school, but still somewhat new. And I feel like this Ineos Grenadier serves that purpose of being a utilitarian vehicle that really encompasses the entire ethos of the off-roading, but still somewhat utilitarian vehicle that can be used in all apocalyptic types of scenarios. So I'm excited to be off-roading this vehicle today. And just looking at the details, looking at the mud details, looking at everything that it can possibly do, I feel like this vehicle, hello, no problem. I feel like this vehicle will be an opportunity for the off-roading community to really embrace something new. So here we are and I'm very excited about this opportunity. Some of the eclectic color choices. The first one we see is a black vehicle. The second one we see is blue. Third one is the classic British race in green. Really cool car. The exact truck I did my test drive in was the magic mushroom car seen here. I would likely choose blue if I had to pick one color today, but the decision just became harder. All right, so I'm gonna sit in the back seat. Pretty solid door feel. The knee room is great. Everything is quite spacious, if I'm being 100% honest. And I could tell that this car is a little bit more advanced in the way that it has been finished. We have this center stack over here. You see a lot of BMW componentry. We have the low range shift knob. And we have this airplane like cockpit, like if I'm Tom Cruise and I am in the movie Top Gun Maverick. I mean, not ready to fly a plane yet, but this looks like it's something that's gonna help me take off into the next dimension, especially in the off-road realm. So, let's go. What we have here is a Recaro seat, Reuter Carrosserie, which has been famous for making Porsche seats for a very long time. And if you're able to see the change in elevation and the lowering, it's just a very analog seat, meaning that this car is just built to last for a really long time. Keeping it simple makes it easier to use, especially for something like an off-road application that is this particular Enios. One thing I particularly like about this car is the 70-30 split rear tailgate. So it's like 30%, 70%. And the accessibility to the rear, because it's boxy, and it adds to the, I guess, the geometry of what you could fit back here. Being a box, you could fit a lot. The exterior looks tough. The bumpers are of solid powder-coated steel and sectioned into five pieces for easy replacement in the event that a small section gets damaged in the rough terrain. When the initial prototype came out, the interior parts and plastics were 3D printed. Every example here had a solidity to it like the no longer available, yet brilliant Land Cruiser or utilitarian G-Wagon. Promising stuff. 
So this is an opportunity to see underneath the vehicle. We have everything really well tucked in. We could see the BMW and the ZF power plant, everything underneath. We have all these suspension components and the suspension geometry, that of like a Nissan Patrol. We have the Bilstein shocks and we also have the Eibach springs. We have beautiful suspension geometry and the componentry. Everything is body on frame construction. You could tell that this was really well thought out, being inspired by the likes of old school Land Rover, but taking the best components from something like a Toyota Hilux and all the classic off-road vehicles that are body on frame because, well, if we're completely honest with ourselves, Land Rover abandoned this type of thinking when they introduced the new Land Rover Defender, like the 110 and the 130, as well as the 90. This was Sir Jim Radcliffe's idea of maintaining an idea and a concept that would be useful for everyone who was thinking about off-roading, but still maintaining aesthetic of original Land Rover because he wanted to replace it with something that was sustainable over a long period of time and something that was going to be long lasting. To drive this today is definitely going to be a fun thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get it up over there. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Keep coming, keep coming up the hill, up the hill, up the hill, up the hill. Easy, 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 stop. Ooh. Yep. You got the tree? Is got it okay? Tree. Yeah, it's so far. All right. I have about two feet. All right, good. That's what happened to him. Ah, oh, he probably it slid in. Tree. You yeah. can't bang the throttle, but that's going to be a problem in that area. And stay high, stay high. Don't turn yet. Stay high all the way. The idea is to beat that tree. It's all about the turning radius. Yeah. Yeah. Automatically always starts in second gear. It, it it defaults to second gear. Yeah. It'll be extremely rare for that thing to go to one on its own, because it'll climb anything you give this thing in second yeah. gear. Anything. A little bit of throttle, just a little bit. You're gonna climb nice and easy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we just start adding if you want, whatever you want. Try a little momentum, but not fast. A little momentum. Yeah. yeah. Just that's that's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. Up, 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 up. BMW in line six. Mm hmm Plenty of torque. Yeah. So this one's real tight. You see this stump here? You gotta beat the stump, then you gotta come around. All the way, all the way. Yep, all the way. And then real soon, real soon. Now all, all the, way. the way. Don't worry about that rock. If the right wheel goes over that rock, it's not an issue. Easy, easy. Right, right. I beat the tree. Yep. Beat the tree. Yeah. That's your big idea. Okay. Right now, just go slow. It'll you'll hop to the rock. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Beautiful. I was thinking one of two things this morning. I'm like, either the rain is gonna make this really awesome, <laughs> like there's gonna be tons of puddles and everything, or we may have a situation where it's gonna be untrackable. Mm -hmm. We got media coming this afternoon, 16 media people. Wow. Uh, we gotta go around with them. It was the only way I got interested. Like, my mom was a school teacher. Yeah. So it was the only way she could ever get me to read. was like, you're going to start reading these magazines. <laughs> and then, because I don't want to read, like, Charlotte's Web. I oh, just yeah. didn't. Yeah, when I'm yeah, in the fourth grade, I'm like, this isn't real to me. <laughs> and then she just saw me playing with Hot Wheels. And then over time, I was just like, oh, my God, he's reading at an advanced level. Like, Because all I did was want to read about these yeah. Yeah. Adventures yeah. from New York to California. And, like, <laughs> and I lived next door to the Red Ball Garage. Yeah. <laughs> it's the dream, man. It's yeah. the dream. So 
I got to meet a lot of the guys who recently broke the record. Did you? Oh, man. So, um... So you're on VinWiki a lot? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. The puddle with the roots. Yes. Yeah. Nice. So you see the chunky rocks there. I try to yeah. stay to the right of the chunky rocks on the way in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you see them there? It'll do anything that so you need. Going you're very, going right here. Yep. To the here right. and then over there. You're not climbing that hill, you're climbing that hill. Okay. Now so, left, now left. Yes, 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 you beat those rocks. Excellent. Absolutely. Just nice and slow. This all this thing is for this one. Keep coming, a little yeah. bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. And Alex is tearing it up that rock. As slow as possible. Yeah. As fast as necessary. <laughs> Exactly. There we go. Visibility is incredible in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. That'll finish the run in auto. Alright, so I have now driven the Enios Grenadier. What are my thoughts on this vehicle? I feel like it's a very capable vehicle. It's got such a great presence on the off-road trail. It's got capability. There's nothing that really gets in the way. It's one of these vehicles that it harkens back to Land Rover design. It's got G-Wagon presence but it's got a Spartan feel like that of a Jeep Wrangler, where they take away all of the stuff that you don't need and only keep the stuff that you do need in order to be successful on an off-road trail or on a utility trail because of, of its immense capability with towing or its incredible capability when climbing a very treacherous terrain. It's something that you can use on a daily basis. Now, if you want to take it for mall crawling and do things like that just to look different and be cool, it can do that too. The only thing that's a little bit, um, that I'm a little bit skeptical about is the price. I wonder where they're gonna position that, where they're gonna position the pricing because they haven't really announced that information yet. They're only saying that they're gonna have about 20 dealerships across the United States. Um, the network for servicing is going to be interesting, but if it's got a BMW powertrain, I'm thinking that these vehicles will be serviceable by any BMW technician or anyone who has anyone who has knowledge about the BMW powertrain. And because it's a it's a BMW inline six and it's got the ZF eight speed automatic transmission, it's something that can be easily serviced. So that's good news. I just wonder what it's going to look like in terms of like the price point in terms of entry and we'll see what that's just going to be like a you know we're just gonna to have to cross that bridge when we get there but for now I think this is a great addition to having an additional option because with cars like the Toyota Land Cruiser being removed from the American market and we have this it's kind of cool that we have an additional option like you subtract the Land Cruiser from Toyota but then this comes in so I think that's a good thing to have. And I'm glad that we have additional options. You know, not having the Land Cruiser definitely puts a dent in the marketplace. The Range Rover, which I think is in similar pricing to this, is now, it's a very posh vehicle. So I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna off-road something with 23 inch rims. Like I recently test drove the Land Rover, Range Rover, Autobiography, SV, or whatever it was. And it felt like a Bentley. You know, it's nice having all these limousine-like features, but for something that I want to off-road and have fun in and not be afraid to break, I feel like these things serve the exact purpose for what I want, or at least what I need. And with that said, I think this is a good vehicle.
it's a good option to have. Um, I don't know enough about it yet, but from what I'm able to test and see, I think this is pretty cool. And with that said, I'm going to head back to New York City, and thank you for watching. Take care, guys.